YouTube boss it going the goat house is back with picks against the spread and score predictions for every single game in week one and we'll be back every week picking every game I it feels so good to be back it feels good for football to be back I went 154 and 108 against the spread last year so going for another good season let's get to all these breakdowns Thursday night football to start things off the Ravens plus three at the Chiefs. I'm going to take the Chiefs in this one 24 to 20, so barely covering that spread. Not one I personally would put money on. It's going to be really, really close, but I'm somewhat confident with the Chiefs here. I mean, I say somewhat because the Ravens are good enough to win this football game, of course, and we saw the Chiefs lose the season opener last year. I don't think they do it again, though. Ravens losing some coaches on the staff, uh, you know, losing some offensive linemen. That could affect them in the game like this going to Kansas City. Uh, but I, I think we're going to see offense early off the scripts, and then the defense will kind of kick in, in the second half, but a lot of offense early. The Chiefs added a bunch of receivers to their room, which was kind of the issue. They, I mean, all season long, and they still won the Super Bowl, but look at the home, the season opener last year, receivers were, was the issue. So that might be tough for the Ravens, the game plan for. I'm curious how their offensive line works, but also tough to deal with Lamar Jackson at any given time, but especially week one when everyone's trying to get into game shape, season shape. So that could be, and then adding Derrick Henry in the mix might be tough. And I do think to beat the Chiefs, to beat Spagnola's defense, run the ball. And I think the Ravens will do that with Lamar and Derrick Henry. So there are reasons the Ravens can win this game. If this was in Baltimore, I'd be picking the Ravens. It's one of those type of games, but I am feeling the Chiefs winning 24 to 20 barely covering so I like them minus three which is not one I personally would put money on Friday night football in Brazil that's going to be weird but it's going to be awesome we get a second game before Sunday even hits Packers at Eagles of course teams aren't supposed to wear green there because the soccer stadiums rule so the Eagles are wearing black and white but the Packers are choosing to wear their green jersey still uh, I'm going to go with Green Bay it's a toss up as well the Green, uh, green Bay Packers are actually plus three so I'm going to pick them getting the points uh, but I think it'll stay close either way. Uh, but I can make an argument for the Eagles. They're another team that's tough to game plan for. When teams are tough to game plan for, they're even more tough to game plan for early in the year uh, because there's not a whole lot you know, of players in full form for the season and there's not a lot of film out. And the, Eagle, the Eagles add Saquon Barkley. So, I mean, you have to have an idea they're going to run the football. Curious about Jeff Halfley and new Packers defense coordinator, his defense. Uh, but I do think of you know, the Eagles, I think they'll make a big jump from where they ended last year, which was really bad. But you still wonder the pass defense, mainly the secondary coverage. Uh, I think Jordan Love could have a day. Uh, and they do have Josh Jacobs, which I think should be phenomenal in that system. But I, I think Love will have a pretty solid day through the air. I think the Eagles will have a solid day on the ground. I'm going to take the passing game in a you know, somewhat of a shootout. That's pretty high scoring for week one, 27, 24, a three point victory for the three point underdogs. But in, I mean, I always say it and it's tr it's It's a fact. Anything can happen in week one. And then when you go to Brazil on a Friday night, anything could happen. So I'd imagine this game stays fairly close though. It should be a really good one on, on Friday night, but I'm going to go with green Bay. On to the Sunday slate. Not, nothing better than Sunday football at 1 p.m. Eastern. Steelers at Falcons. I'm, I'm going to take the Falcons. It's it's only a three-point line. The Steelers are plus three. Out, and the Falcons will cover that. It could be a little tricky, though, because, again, Atlanta, so many new faces. The coaching staff, the, I mean, the whole coaching staff, the, a new quarterback in Kirk Cousins. It's for the better. But everything's new, it feels like. I mean, a new couple new star defensive players. They already had some, of course, but... So do they click right away and you're going against a fresh Steelers physical Mike Tomlin team that you know they're going to play pretty good defense and TJ Watt, one of the very best in football, I mean right out the gate, he's always dominant right when he steps on the field in week one going after uh, uh, Kirk Cousins who recently tore his Achilles, that makes it a little scary, but in ATL... Falcons I like on both sides of the ball I, I just don't love the Steelers offense enough to do any more than around 16 17 points so that's my main issue I, I, the Falcons will still have explosive plays whether it's running the ball to Bijan or throwing the ball to Bijan but throwing the ball to their weapons as well they'll, they'll you know they'll have some high 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 highs on offense you know if you will like big explosive plays and then the Steelers defense will show up so I got them winning 23-16. The Falcons really add, they added some playmakers on top of playmakers. They have two playmaking free safeties now. Already had Bates, now have Simmons, and a quarterback, a little bit of a question on the Steelers' offense. So Steelers, Steelers will probably keep the ball underneath, pound the football, 
But if they're forced to push it downfield, the Falcons could make a play. And they're just so tough to game plan for on top of it because everything's new. You know, you wonder about chemistry, but it's just so difficult to game plan for. I know that the Steelers have Arthur Smith, but it's not the same as the Arthur Smith team that the Falcons were last year. So you can't really sit down and watch too much film and go, okay, this is what's going to happen. It's, it's not that simple here in week one. So I am pretty confident with the Falcons, but it's tough to say super confident with anything in week one. But 23-16 Atlanta is what I got. Cardinals at Bills. The Cardinals are plus six going to Buffalo. The, the Cardinals, again, could they could be sneaky starting in week one with Kyler Murray this time. They add Marvin Harrison Jr. They have some weapons. I think they'll be pretty effective on the ground this year. And then maybe in this game too because the Bills – you know, struggle to stop the run, struggle to tackle specifically down the stretch last year, and they do not have Matt Milano. So that'd be a reason, you know, do they stop Kyler Murray scrambling? I think that'd be the reason the Cardinals could win, pull it off, run Murray more. They're going to be expecting them to pound the football with their two physical backs on the inside. So that could be key for Arizona. I think the I think the Bills offense, I think the Cardinals will run the ball, which will run the clock, and the Bills actually will run the ball more than we're used to, like the past Bills team, but they're still going to air it out. Josh Allen's going to have success on the ground through the air. I think Dalton Kincaid has a big game. I think the Bills running backs play pretty solid. The Cardinals run defense was really bad last year. Of course, they add some pieces. I don't think it's fixed, especially in weeks week one. I do think it's a little better. So I have the Bills winning by a decent amount. Uh, it is tough. It's a lot of points for week one. So it's typically tough to put money on the teams that have a big or favorites by, by big. But I do in Buffalo, I like how they match up in this one. I'm going to go 28 to 20 Bills. Titans at Bears, one of my favorite games of the week. I think pretty similar teams, a lot of upside. They really got better adding a bunch of weapons. Uh, I think they're going to be better than expected on both sides of the ball. I have had to go with some upsets this week, so I went with the Tennessee Titans winning 19-17. I feel pretty good about that score. I do think it's going to be more of a defensive game than people are realizing that I once realized. I think maybe off the scripts early, the offenses can be pretty successful. Then it's going to slow down a little bit. I love both these defenses. Eberflus calls a good defense. I love the secondary led by Jalen Johnson, who is on his way to being a lead if he's not already. And then Legereus Sneed and company on the other side. But actually, I should say Jeffrey Simmons and company. The interior defense line. I love the Titans' defense in general, but the interior defense line. I said in the picks video, I think these could be the top two teams stopping a run in all of football this year. And it'll show in this game. Uh, Caleb Williams would be tough to game plan for. I think both sides would be tough to game plan for. Uh, both pretty balanced, but I think Denard Wilson, who calls a good defense, I, I think he'll have some uh, you know master plan for a young rookie quarterback. You know, blitzes, simulated pressures, different looks. Uh, you know, it could confuse uh, Williams, but I think Eberflus could do the same to Levis. I think it's gonna be a really good game. It being in Soldier is a tough place to play. Maybe why the line's at four and a half. I was surprised the Bears were favored by that much. So I guess I am going with a pr pretty decent underdog here. Uh, but I, I like the Titans plus four and a half. If they lose, I don't think it's going to be more than that, but we will see. I, I like. I really. I think it's more of a defensive game, like I said, than, than people think. I really like these defenses. Uh, should be an interesting one. I, one of my again, one of my favorite ones of the week. Cannot wait for that battle between these young up and coming teams. Patriots Bengals not one of the best matchups of the week but it could be closer than you think so one thing that really stands out to me is the Bengals always start slow even if they're fully healthy they struggle we've seen Burrow struggle right off the bat so that could make it a little scary especially with an 8.5 spread they're favored by eight and a half points but man I and I think the Bengals actually could come out a little flat I could see it I think the offense being a little slower than they should be I could and I have that. I have them scoring 20 points, but that's going to be enough. I do not see the Patriots under Jacoby Brissett with that offense line, those weapons against a Lou Anaromo defense scoring many points. Like I, I think it's going to be a win for them. Not a win, but I think it's going to be a decent day for their offense if they score more than 13 points. So I'm right around that range. I could even see less than 10. So I think eight and a half is a little scary for the how the Bengals start in week one in general. Usually you take the underdogs, but... Given the matchup and the Patriots is not being able to score that many points, in my opinion, and that's going to be the difference in this one. So I do have the Bengals covering and winning twenty to ten. The Patriots are probably they're going to try to run clock and just try to stay in this game, uh, or maybe they test some stuff out. I don't know if they're really worried about. I mean, obviously they're going to go out there and try to win football games, but I don't know if they're really worried about. It. They're more focused on their future with Drake May. I do think it's a bright one. I really do like Drake May in the future there. Uh, but they're still a work in progress. We'll see if the, how the Bengals start. We're used to them starting so poorly. Get it together in this matchup. You got a favorable matchup at home. I got them winning twenty to ten and just covering that big spread there. 
Texans and Colts. This is, if there was ever such thing as a trap game, I think there is a trap game in week one. This could be it. It's still, still tough to pick against the Texans, but I think this is going to be super close. Man, I have the Texans. I don't touch this game. I'll say it right now. I'm usually cautious with week one in general because weird things happen, like upsets like crazy. But this is one of those ones do not touch. It could go either way. It being in Indy, I do think the Texans are the better team. The better team doesn't always win. but And they're loaded. They should be even better. You know, the young guys stepping up this year. They add digs. Everyone's healthy right now. They had Daniil Hunter, who's one of the best on defense. I mean, Stingley, these guys are all getting better. Will Anderson, they get better at linebacker. Uh, the only question for the Texans, I said it before, is the interior defensive line. I do think it'll play better than how it looks on paper because D'Amico Ryans is a genius. But going against that run game of Steichen, Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson, that could be a little tough. I'd say that this game's going to be close. If, if the Colts, the Colts' way to win, I think, is actually running Anthony Richardson a ton. That could really throw off the Texans. It threw them off early in the year last year. I don't want to base too much off that. But running Anthony Richardson, and then they won't, you know, misdirection. You won't be able to know, you know, Taylor's getting the ball against a really good defense coordinator in, in D'Amico Ryan. That's what we got to do. You got to throw them off a little bit, keep the guys on the field guessing, leave it up to them so they can give it to Taylor or Richardson, keep it. Why they may not do that is because Richardson ran a good amount last year and he got beat up, multiple injuries. So do they want to take it easy? It's a little bit of a mystery, but. Richardson could decide to scramble on his own, and that you know Steichen really doesn't have much control over that. So that that's what's a bit of a mystery for this game. How much will Richardson run? And as a passer, he's going to make big plays. He's going to make bad plays. He's still a work in progress. If he's airing the ball a lot downfield throughout this game, he'll again make big plays. But if he plays like Stingley and Laster, or Petrie, they will take the ball away. You know from them, that's kind of the issue. But Colts got to run the football. But the Texans looking at the matchup. In their favor, I think they're better, but those receivers are pretty loaded, especially adding digs, and the Colts' weakness is their secondary, so the Texans could take advantage of that. I felt like 26-23 around. I thought 26-24, and that's why I say don't touch this game because I'm back and forth between those two scores, and the difference is the Texans are covering in this one and the Colts are covering in the other one. So it's just one of those games, division rival, anything can happen in week one. So it definitely should be a good one. Uh, it should be close, but you never know. You never know. It should be a fun one. Jags at Dolphins. I do like the Dolphins this game. Uh, you know, it's hard to be super confident with anything in week one, looking at every single week one in the history of football and of the NFL. But I am pretty confident with the Dolphins, and I'm not. I feel like the world's split on the Jags right now. Like half the people are like almost making fun of them. They make fun of Trevor Lawrence. It's weird. And the other half, like they can get back on track. I am actually more in that they're going to get back on track as a talented team. But in a game like this, I don't love them. They definitely have a chance to win because they are a good team. At least they're staying in the state. But the Dolphins, in, in this time at this time of the year, they're so tough to play against in Miami. And the home field advantage, no matter if you're from Florida or not is crazy. So I do like that. The Dolphins seem to start very, very hot. The Jags started slow last year, then they picked it up very much so, and then went downhill. But uh, I like the Dolphins. They're they're explosive. They're fast. You know, they don't need to be in shape. Those guys are just, it helps if they're in better shape, but those guys are just going to come out there and ball out and be explosive, be fast anytime they step on a football field. And they're tough to game plan for. The different things that I think they're going to get creative with A-Chan a little more this year, the way they use all three, you know, two or three of those backs and having to deal with Tyree Kill. I do like Ryan Nielsen and where the Jags defense is heading. I do think the corners could get beat up a little bit because the speed in this game. But I think they'll have some success on offense due to the Dolphins being a little beat up at the edge position. But I like the Dolphins. I like them covering. Um... They're going to score 30-plus points, I believe, even though I do think the Jags' defense will figure it out at, at some point this year. If the Dolphins – I don't have that too many takeaways from week one, but if the Dolphins are, like, upsetting and super disappointing, if they, I mean, if they lose the game by one or two, whatever, but if they're extremely, for some reason, disappointing this game, I might be a, I might be a little more disappointed because it's a team you expect at home with that home field advantage, and they usually start hot, and they have advantages to start the season's hot. You expect things from them. So that's an interesting one to watch there. So a little more pressure on some of those teams like that than the rest, in my opinion, at least. But 30-24, to 24, fun one if you like offense. Uh, Dolphins in that one, covering that three. Panthers, Saints, I got a one-point squeaker in this one. Ever since the schedule came out all offseason, I'm like, I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to pick the Panthers in that one. But, man, I hate changing my mind. And, again, it could go either way. So we'll take the Panthers with the points there, plus four. That's just too much for this 
low scoring NFC South battle that you know it's it's too four is too much to me. I don't know. I'm surprised about that. Um, kind of like the Tennessee one, but I end up switching to the Saints because the Panthers are you know they have a starting pass rusher that's on you know going to be out for four weeks at least. They're scrambling for corners. I guess the argument against that is J.C. Horn is out there and he is actually when he's out there, which is kind of rare, unfortunately, he is one of the very best in football. So that's interesting, uh, but. Because they're kind of scrambling for some help, and the, and the way to beat the Saints is get pressure on Derek Carr, and it's not that difficult with that offensive line and Derek Carr holding the ball. But I, I just, you know, how good will Clowney be away from the Ravens? Derek Brown's very, very solid, obviously, but I don't know how much pressure they're going to get. I, I don't think it's like the worst matchup for the Saints. In the in, it's in a, in a defensive game, which I think we all agree it's probably going to be a defensive game. I'm just going to take the better defense, and the Panthers' defense could be good when it's healthy this year. But the Saints defense is always good. They have so many freaking good corners. They have – Edge has been a question recently, but they have so many guys that can rotate in and rush the passer right now. And, you know, linebackers, Demario Davis, one of the best still. Dennis Allen's a really good defensive coach. I'll, and it, I just – I feel like overthinking if I don't take the Saints at this point, even though I can – it's 50 it, – to me it's 50-50, 51-49 if we put a percentage on it, but – in a defensive game in New Orleans, I'm going to take the better defense. That's kind of my deciding factor there. But love Dave Canales. I think Bryce Young picks it up. I mean, the Saints, as good as their defense is, they are kind of predictable. It's like it's man coverage most of the time. We'll see if they switch it up. So that makes it a little easier for Bryce Young. It's going to feel like playing you know, against man coverage in college because that's what a lot of college teams run for the most part. So Dave Canales could maybe you know tough to game plan for, new look Panthers offense. It'd be a reason to take them, worry about the Saints offensive line a little bit. Defensive game in New Orleans week one, I'm going to take the better defense by one point, but I would, I definitely, even though I'm picking the Saints, I really like the Panthers plus four, actually. Is it my favorite one? Maybe not. And we'll do our locks video where I pick my favorites in like different categories if you're trying to put money on games. Uh, our recent, check out our recent video, weekly picks with other guys. They kind of give you a different perspective on things as well. We have a loads of weekly content too, so make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on. Let's go on to the next game though. Vikings and Giants, my Vikings. I'm not super confident with them this year. I'm not super confident in the Giants either, but either team I guess could be a little sneaky, but you know, they both got talent. It's just a lot of question on the quarterback position. Can they stay healthy? The Giants offensive line, the Vikings are a little beat up elsewhere, but this line has moved a bit. I, the Giants last week were favored by one and the Vikings we're now favored by one, and actually right before recording, I think they might be up to one and a half, so it's constantly moving in the Vikings' favor. I do like the Vikings. The one thing that stands out when picking this game, there's really one thing that stands out, is I know I do question both quarterbacks. The Vikings' defense is a little bit pain in the ass to deal with. I think once you figure it out, you know, their corners, even though they added Gilmore, you probably could beat them. But Brian Flores is always given different looks. He's even since versus Brian Flores from a few years ago. He's added a lot more zone to his game. He used to be like all zero coverage, you know, man blitz. But the blitz, you know, and the Vikings added pass rushers, even though they lost Hunter. Is it going to be a, a pain for Daniel Jones, who we don't have a lot of faith in right now to deal with? And he doesn't have Saquon to kind of be the scapegoat there. But neighbors definitely could be a problem. They're going to get him screen passes. They're going to get him end arounds. They're going to launch the ball to him, just three-step drop and go. And that could be the difference. That could be the difference. So they're going to try to dink and dunk. The Vikings, I know they're known as a beat-up team, but guys like Aaron Jones going to be out there. They actually have a running game. They didn't have it last year or so, and they still have, you know, they have a fresh Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison out there. No Hawkinson, though. That's key. The offensive line seems to be getting better. No Reisner out there, though. So I'll, the, the, the one deciding factor that, you know, one thing that stands out more than anything, again, is that Brian Flores' defense. Uh, in terms of a matchup factor, like a mismatch factor. So I'll either take the Vikings. I think a lot of field goals in this game. I think a lot of field goals. I think we'll actually see good drives, but res resulting, you know, ending in field goals. 1916, thought about 1917, right around that range for the Minnesota Vikings covering that one. Uh, but it could go either way. It's not one of the ones that I absolutely love this week. Raiders and Chargers, another game that could go either way, and I have a one-point squeaker once again. I think three points is a little too much. If you're going against a spread, I take the Raiders plus three because they very realistically could win this game. There might be a little more offense in this game than people think. Both, both teams look at this team like the Raiders. You know, They don't have really a great quarterback. They had, the defense was good last year, led by one of the best, Max Crosby, the Chargers. You know, Herbert's a little beat up. The running backs on paper look bad. The receivers on paper look bad. So people kind of think defensive game. I don't really – I mean, it's a, this is not a shootout, but I think a little more offense than you think. 
Uh, the Chargers' run defense, I really, really worry about. So the Raiders can come out and just pound the crap out of the ball to Zamir White. I think he has a big game in this one, and, and they'll do play action and dump it off to Bowers. I'd watch out for Brock Bowers in week one here as well, and they could win the game because that they can control the clock. In L.A., I think the Chargers' offense will be a little better than expected too. The Raiders, you know, they played a lot better than how they looked on paper last year. Do they continue off that? I know Mad Max is going to be a problem. I do like the Chargers' offense line especially or a lot of it because who they've added, you know, adding Joe all it's complete. They're healthy right now, but the scheme is well, I don't think you stop Max Rosby though. You don't stop him, but uh, Christian Wilkins can be a factor as well. But I, somebody's going to step up at receiver, Lad McConkey, Josh Palmer. These are still solid receivers. Herbert's a great quarterback. He'll deal to, to them and they will be physical up front as well. Uh, I think they find a way at home. It's a very tricky one. I think Herbert's just, the, the quarterback difference is in L.A. is getting me on this one and, and not being able, not fully understanding the game plan for a new-look Chargers team. So that is the reason, but it's a fifth, to me it's a 50-50 game. I'm surprised it's three. I'm surprised it's not like one and a half or you know one like the Vikings game. So I will take the Raiders against the spread plus three because, they again, they can win this game very realistically. But I'll, I'll take the Chargers. Justin Herbert makes that extra play in this one, but watch out for that Raiders run game that can make the difference. Broncos, Seahawks, it's a tough one against the spread because a lot of points for a Broncos team that they'll play. They're not supposed to be the best team this year, but they will play everybody tough. They'll be in all games, I feel like. They'll be physical. Uh, Bo Nix and company, they looked really good in preseason. They're going to play that really quick, efficient, dink and dunk, quick, quick, and then hit you with the with that surprise play, whether it's on the ground or through the air. Uh, th- that Those teams are typically a pain in the ass to deal with right away early in the season. Typically, those teams win. I do not. I hate the matchup for them. I, there's better teams in the Seahawks that I think the Broncos would beat in week one. I do not love the matchup. That can blow up in my face because anything could happen in week one. But Mike McDonald is one of the best defensive game planners and play callers there is. He's perfect. The, Mike McDonald is a great hire for the Seahawks. He is perfect to match up against this like quick, fast, powerful, fa- you know, I said fast, right? Dink and dunk offense. And I don't say dink and dunk like it's a bad thing. Like sometimes it's really fun. It's really good. And, and this, the Broncos should do it at a high level and they'll have some surprises down the field and big runs by Knicks even and their running backs. But And I think the Seahawks players, the young athletic players they have, they have so many good rising stars. I think they are built to stop that in week one. I think that is like the one of the most perfect teams to stop that in week one. Other problem, the Seahawks are one of the more nightmare teams. I, th- I could be a bad prediction at the end of the day. We'll see what happens. But to deal with in week one because that defense, it's everything's new. They bring in a college offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb. They're gonna, it's just not the same old Seahawks offense. They're going to give spread looks. It's going to look like a college offense at times. And they have Geno who can air it out. You know, not the best quarterback in the world, but air it out. he can air it out. DK, Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigbo is going to break out big time. And they have running backs. Like it's so difficult to, to game plan for that. Like the different looks they're going to give that they didn't have before, and they're going to wear the Broncos out. I think they can score in a play against anyone. I think people are asleep on the Seahawks. So I I hate the matchup for the Broncos, and they very well could win. It's week one. Uh, I'm going to take the Seahawks 24-16. Thought about a little more scoring too. I thought about like 27-19, 27-20. Based off the matchup. It looks good for Seattle against the spread, but because week one is a thing, six is a lot of points. The Broncos could win the game. Like it's possible. So a little scary at the same time, even though it's one of my favorite like matchups of the week for a single team. So it's going to be interesting. I'm curious. I'm curious to see if the Seahawks aren't tough to deal with, that they don't have different looks than they have in the past. I'm going to be concerned, but I think they, they really will you know look a lot different actually. Commanders and Bucks. This could be another one that's like a week, a potential week one upset. I thought about taking the Commanders because Jane Daniels with his arm, his legs, Cliff Kingsbury, the Cliff Kings, Kingsbury Cardinals teams were always teams struggle against them early in years, and then they went downhill after they got figured out. So you know that's a you know Dan Quinn should have the defense playing well. That's a reason for the Commanders. It is a it is a good reason. I thought about it. The Buck, yeah, the Bucks though, you know they got better and better as the year went on last year. Baker played very well. Does he play well again? He has really solid weapons. Dan Quinn should be in man coverage a lot. I think they can figure it out. I don't love the commander's corners, to be perfectly honest. I think they'll stack the box at times. Guys will be open. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, you know Jalen McMillan, even other guys, they'll be open down the field. 
there's just a big matchup issue there. Uh, you know, so I, I'm going to take the Bucks. Todd Bowles should have something up his sleeves for a rookie quarterback as well. But there's more score. I, I'm predicting more scoring than, than they're supposed to be in this one. 26-24. I, I think the offense of Kingsbury, Jaden Daniels, I think it'll be explosive. It'll be tough to game. It'll t- be tough to deal with. I think he'll... I think the rookie quarterback will have production against this Bucks defense. I really do. But I think Baker and those receivers, and I like the running back room as well, I think they will have production on the commander's defense. Uh, so that's a tricky one. Could be a trap one. I can see the commanders winning. I'll take the commanders with the points. Three and a half. I think the Bucks win by one, two, three. Somewhere in there, I have 26-24. A little more scoring than expected. That's sneakily one of the favorite, favorite ones of the week. The games, can't wait. Cowboys and Browns, yet another squeaker. I have a lot of squeakers this week. Week one's tough. These are really, the NFL did a great job with the, with the schedule here. Uh, could go either way, and that's why if we're going with the points, I will take the Cowboys plus two and a half. But I'm going to pick the Browns to win. Deron Bland being out could be that just that slight factor. Um, you know, in there, the Browns could kind of pick on that side of the field. Even with Diggs, like he's go, converting from not being in the on out there last year to a uh, heavy man coverage corner to now Mike Zimmer runs a little more zone so curious about that Stefanski versus Mike Zimmer both were with the Vikings Stefanski has tweaked his his system a little bit it used to be all outside zone there's a lot more power running inside zone with Cleveland now it's interesting um, you know so maybe that could throw it don't throw them off a little bit the Browns started well last year I think Watson could have a decent game and I think Jerome Ford the Cowboys struggle a little bit against the run Ford could have a pretty solid game. They're going to pick on the side opposite of Diggs, perhaps. Uh, I, li- I like the defense, too. It's a little tricky. The Browns were really inconsistent on defense last year, but they were really good at home. A little bit too much man coverage, so hopefully they mix it up a little bit. Uh, I love Dak. I love CeeDee Lamb. They're going to be explosive this year. CeeDee Lamb was my offense player of the year pick, but that's that's going into week one, that's – I mean, obviously they can get the ball to Ferguson. Other guys can make plays, but – that's kind of what they're relying on to win the game. I think a little more defense than expected in this one. I love Tyler Guyton. I think Tyler Guyton's going to be a star. I think it was an A-plus pick for the Cowboys. Could have his hands full in a game like this, depending on which side Miles Garrett's rushing on for the most part. Uh, but I'm going to take the Browns. That is a It's a, one of the 50-50 tough ones to pick. So I'll take the Browns 20-19 at home. If this is in Dallas, I'd go Cowboys. If it was in Cleveland and Bland was playing, I think I would go Cowboys, actually. Bland make that that one interception that wins the game or just does better than the you know the alternatives. So uh, that's really what's splitting it up. But I'll take the Cowboys plus two and a half, even though I have the, I have the Browns winning that. I think Brady's calling this game. It's gonna, I can't wait. There's so many games I can't wait for. Sunday night football, the rematch for Matt Stafford going to Detroit. That playoff game was such a battle. It went down kind of the wire. It felt like could have went either way. Lions pulled it off. Lions are wearing those black jerseys, apparently. So get that black logo up there. Love it. I'm confident with the Lions this one. Maybe Stafford. I, I, Stafford was fantastic last year. I think he can continue off that. They made the offensive line better, even though maybe a little beat up, at least a couple weeks ago it was. Uh, you know, the running game was really good last year. They struggled to run in the Lions, though, but the offense, the run blocking should be a lot better. So Stafford, maybe he's that good. He can do it alone. And Cooper Cup's healthy. You know, he was playing. He was either out or playing beat up last year. I think there. So I have 28-20 Lions. I actually think it's going to feel like more of an offensive game than that score shows. And that score shows some offense. And what I mean about that, basically, I think there's going to be a lot of success on offense. But the Lions pounding the shit out of the ball will run the clock and they'll be very successful doing that and they'll be again very successful running the football they always are but against a no Aaron Donald and no Ernest Jones Rams defense I think the Rams will figure it out as the season goes on with the young studs they have and they have really good coaching but Lions on the ground with Gibbs and Montgomery and in the play action golf getting outside dumping Laporta to St. Brown they will have success doing that and they will drain the clock so I think the Rams will actually have success, even though 20 does not seem like super success on offense. I think they will. I think having a fresh Cooper Cup out there with Puka Nakua, those running backs to have, Stafford, who played, I thought, up to an MVP, not that I said he should have won it, but up to an MVP level last year with a better offense line, McVay, they will be successful. I think the Lions will drain too much clock and will have just more success here. Uh, curious about the Lions defense. They had a bunch of corners, some young guys, though, so how that they'll need to step up in a game like this. Uh, so we'll see, but I, I'm fairly confident with the Lions. I wish the line was three, but I do have them covering that three and a half, 28, 20. I thought about 30 to 23 in that range, 
But I, I actually originally had 30 for the Lions. I'm like, they're going to run so much clock that they're going to score less than what it feels like. You know, it's going to be one of those games. It's, 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 a, it's a Lions game, you know, it's in, at home. I almost wish this one was in L.A. I think it would be a little more interesting. The Lions got that at home game in the playoff, but they, they earned it. You know, they earned it. So should be a lot of fun. Um, Lions are always fun to watch uh, these days. I mean, so are the Rams, very, both very explosive. And a good one on Monday Night Football. If you watched our picks video, I did make a change here. I kind of hinted at it, though. I thought Trent Williams, it was almost making it sound like he wasn't going to be, you know, they weren't going to sign him. He wasn't going to be back. A little bit of a scare. So I was picking the Jets. The Niners offensive line was a little bit of a question as it was. and then, But should be better than last year. Then Trent Williams was supposed to be out. Jets have a really good defense. Rodgers is back. I mean, they beat the Bills without Rodgers basically on, on prime time last year. So they can definitely, they could still do it. I think four and a half is too much. I'll take the Jets plus four and a half. But I did switch my pick since Trent Williams is signed. He got his money. He's back. No sign Reddick it looks like. So I will take the Niners. At, I mean, Niners at home in prime time. The worry, the worry is, you know, McCaffrey's been out during training camp. Williams has been holding out. Ayuk's been holding out. Will it click? Are they in season form? That's my worry. But I, they get hyped. You know, the Niners are such a good football team. They're they're ready to play at any given time. You know, the the boys are back. You know, the, the it feels like they have that band that 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 bond there. So I think they'll be jacked up to play this game uh, against Robert Salah, the former 49ers uh, defensive coordinator. So, but he does know Shanahan. Shanahan knows him. So it should be interesting as well. So I'll take the Niners at home. If this was in New York, I'd be taking the Jets for sure. I'll go 23 20. That was like the biggest win I, I was going to have. Like, I think it's, I, I actually pictured a specific 20 to 20 Niners kick a game winning field goal. I think it'll be 20 20 in the last drive of the game. The Niners win. That's what I think. So it's going to even feel closer than 23 20. But four and a half seems like a bit given the Jets will be ready to go. They're really good on both sides of the ball. Uh, offensive lines better. They got Tyrone Smith out there, and they um, they could win this game. So if, again, if it was in New York or if Trent Williams wasn't playing, I'd be picking the Jets. But made a switch to the Niners. Switching in the past hasn't gone well for me. I, you know, I'm typically really good at picking, but it went switching picks. So maybe I just cursed the Niners. Doesn't apply in week one. Maybe we'll go. We'll go with that. But those are all my picks against the spread. You see, I'm listed. We added that this year. I'm cut off. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, and then we, our most recent video was our straight up picks, but I got Pete and junior with us. So you get different perspective, have power rankings up a locks video still to come a lot more action to come every single week. So please join us for all that. You will not regretting subscribing and turning those notifications on. Uh, but that will do it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.